Here in Arma Robinson Library, we're fortunate to have many interesting and significant items within our collection. In this film, I'm going to show one of these to you. This is the library's copy of Gulliver's Travels. Um, it's a first edition, uh, dating from 1726. When we look at the title page, you can see it was originally uh, published in London by Benjamin Mott, and the full title uh, that it has here is Travels into Several Remote Nations of the World in Four Parts. Two are in this volume and the other two are in the second volume that I have beside me here. And it says by Lemuel Gulliver, first a surgeon and then a captain of several ships. And the frontispiece engraved portrait that we have here is a fabricated um, portrait of what uh, Gulliver is imagined to have looked like. What makes this extra special is that not only is it a first edition, it is actually Jonathan Swift's own personal copy. There had been certain changes made to Swift's manuscript and uh, he is uh, marking these out in preparation for a reprint. So let me show some of them to you. Here uh, he is talking about uh, different colours of thread and in the text it's purple, yellow and white and Swift has marked in the margin that they should have been red, blue and green. And really um, Gulliver's Travels is a satire, it's attacking uh, prominent people in society and things like that and in this case the, the colours he had originally intended were um, to do with the, the British um, honours system. Moving on then, um, I'll show you one other one. Um, and this one is to do with an inn. The inn in the town is being uh, in the appears in the text as the Green Eagle, and Swift has struck that out. You can see three lines there, and it should have been the horn and the crown. And fearing legal prosecution, the publisher had this changed uh, to uh, the Green Eagle, and that was because it was originally an attack meant on the monarchy. Swift himself uh, was uh, a visitor to Armagh, often actually staying for prolonged periods with uh, the Cope family at uh, Loch Gall and the Atchisons at Market Hill or what is now um, Gosford Forest Park. And he, he stayed for quite extended periods um, and was quite a wearisome guest as this particular poem that, that he uh, wrote uh, here helps us to see. It's entitled Dean Swift at Sir Arthur Atchison's in the north of Ireland. So I'm just going to read you a few extracts from it. After a week, a month, a quarter, and day succeeding after day, says not a word of his departure, though not a soul would have him stay. The house accounts are daily rising, so much as stay to swell the bills. My dearest life, it is surprising how much he eats, how much he swills. His brace of puppies, how they stuff, and they must have three meals a day. Yet never think they get enough, his horses too eat all the hay. Oh, that I could once be rid of this insulting tyrant deed. So this is just some of the, the items that we have here in the library relating to Swift. We have several others, including, for example, handwritten letters that he sent to the Archbishop of Dublin, William King. I hope you've enjoyed this brief insight into some of these items relating to Jonathan Swift. There are many other treasures held within this library. I would encourage you to come along and explore them for yourself.